to section 2, diving into model view section, which covers sorting. In this video, we're going to cover Qt's model view paradigm, including both the origins and responsibilities, establishing a need for sorting with a real life problem, before diving into Qt's two methods of sorting, sorting by a proxy model and programmatically sorting our original model. So let's go ahead and get started with the model view controller, or Qt's rebrand of that, the model view. The model view controller architecture is a design paradigm used for building user interfaces. It helps separate the way data is stored from the way it's presented to the user. You can see a typical diagram with the separation of concerns on the screen. Qt uses a special construct of the model view controller framework called the model view. The model view framework is the same as the model view controller framework. Qt just combines the view with the controller. So the view in Qt is responsible for both showing the data and responding to user input. You can see a diagram of the model view framework here. So why is this important? Separation of concerns helps promote code reuse. It makes it possible to display the same data in both different views and implement new types of views while leaving the data untouched. Understanding the model view paradigm also helps when designing our GUIs so that we can leverage the Qt framework instead of fighting against it. With such a mature framework, there's often a prescribed way to do something. For example, there's two prescribed ways to do sorting in Qt. So what do we want to sort? Well, let's say that we have an application that shows pictures. We want the pictures to be arranged in the most aesthetically pleasing manner possible, which in this example, we'll be doing by color sorting. We're going to leverage our perceptual uniform color map pictures to help highlight just how effective this can be. Now, please note that for other non-trivial examples, color sorting is a much more difficult task. But let's take a look at the code that we already have at this point. If we open the project by selecting the correct PRO file and configure it using the default desktop configuration, we can take a look. Opening the main.cpp, we can see that we create a custom main window and show it before running the exec event loop. Pulling open the header file of the main window, we can start to see some of the meat and potatoes of this code. We're going to have two views, a queue list view and a queue table view. We'll use each view to demonstrate a different way of sorting in Qt. We've also got a custom model to help drive our views. In this case, the photo item model. Additionally, we're creating a tab widget, which will allow the user to flip between the two views. Now, if we pull open our photo item model, what we'll find is a large for loop that go ahead and creates our icons, creates an item, and sets the item with the icon that we just created before finally setting the item in the model. The only weird bit about this code is that I'm actually creating a second column here using the last icon and then setting it in the column of one. This is to help show exactly how effective sorting is on our queue table view. So let's go ahead and run and see what we're working with right now. The first tab is our queue list view, and the second is the queue table view. As I've mentioned before, there are two prescribed methods of sorting in Qt, and you can see I've already labeled which method we're going to use on which view. So in the queue list view, which is this one, we'll be using a proxy model. In the queue table view, which is this one, we'll actually be sorting this programmatically. Now, you might be surprised, but the proxy method using a queue sort filter proxy model is actually the easier of the two methods to implement. So let's go ahead and start with that. We'll need to look at our main window.cpp file. In the constructor of our main window, you can see that we create an instance of our model, an instance of our queue list view, before setting our model that we created on our list view. Now, this is going to be really dumb, but let's go ahead and put a queue sort filter proxy model in so you can get a view of how the class is used at a high level. So what we'll go ahead and do is in between the creation of our list view, we'll create an instance, and I've already got a sort proxy model. And we'll just go ahead and create a new Q sort filter proxy model. As part of this, we'll need to go ahead and set the source model on our proxy model. So we'll go ahead and call that function and pass in our original model, which we've created up here into our sort proxy filter. And the last thing that we need to do is instead of passing in our original model, we're going to go ahead and pass in our sort proxy model to our list view instead. Semicolons. So high level, this is how you use a Q sort filter proxy model. Create an instance, set the source model, and then pass the proxy model into your view instead of the original. But this currently won't color sort our pictures like we want because we haven't coded it yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, I've already created the base framework as part of this example, so we'll just move to that, which is labeled the sort proxy model header file. 
So in order to enable basic sorting, all we need to do is implement a less than function, which as you can see from the method call, takes in two Q model indexes, one is the left and one is the right, and returns back a Boolean. Now you might be thinking, Ben, how are we going to go from a Q model index to finding the luminosity value of a picture? And I've got to be honest, getting the luminosity value of a picture out of the Qt framework is a difficult task, but we're not going to go into it too much. What we're going to talk about instead is how to get data values out of a Q model index, because once you know how to get your hands on the data, you can figure everything else out relatively simply depending on your specific use case. So for the Q sort filter proxy model, I happen to know that the function is going to return a Q variant. So let's go ahead and declare a Q variant and we'll go ahead and call this left data. And what we want to do is get a pointer to our source model so that we can call the data function on that. And the data function takes in two variables, one of which is our Q model index, which we've got. So we'll go ahead and pass in the source left. And the second is the role. Now the role is a little special. We should take a second to talk about that. So roles in Qt are used by the view to indicate to the model which type of data it needs. So in this case, we want to get some sort of color or decoration information. So if we take a look at this table, what we can see is that's most best represented by the decoration role. And this table will go ahead and tell us what types it's going to return. So the data be rendered as a decoration in the form of an icon, Q color, Q icon, or Q pix map. The other important role that you'll often see is the Qt display role, which as you can see from this table, we'll go ahead and return a Q string. So now that we've figured out what role that we need, we'll go ahead and go back to our code and plug that role in. So we'll go Qt decoration. So now that we've got the left, the only other thing that we need is the right. So we'll do some modifications here real quick to get our right. And now that we've got our two Q variants, the next question we need to answer is how do we wrangle pixel, picture, or color information out of a Q variant? Well, if we look at the Q variant documentation, what we're going to see is the Q variant contains a lot of two functions, which helps it convert two specific types of data. So we can see like a two bit array, two bool, two byte array. What we won't find is any type of color information or anything like that. But there is in the documentation a note here which says Q variant can't get these things, but you can use the value function to actually wrangle out some of this information, which is exactly what we're going to do. So if we go back to our code, we want to grab our Q icon information. So let's just go ahead and call this the left icon. And what we're going to do is on the left data, we're going to call the value function. And we're going to pass it in the type we want, which in this case is a Q icon. And that is all we need to do. So let's make sure that we do the same thing for the right. Call this on the right data, the value function, and we'll pass in the Q icon type. And that is it. From here, we'll just call a helper function I included, which is luminosity less than. Now under the hood of this function, it gets a Q pix map from the Q icon, changes the Q pix map into a Q image, grabs a pixel from the Q image, before finally converting it from the RGB color space to the LAB color space, which contains the luminosity. So the calculations are all in the luminosity calc.h if you want to see the implementation. But for our case and purposes, all we need to do is return the luminosity less than function, passing in both the left icon and the right icon. So now we finish the implementation, all we need to do is actually include it. So as you remember, right now we've got a Q sort filter proxy model. So let's go ahead and remove that and we'll go ahead and pass in our instance, which is a sort proxy model. And now if we run this, we're actually not going to see what you're thinking. So instead of having all the information sorted correctly, we're still going to see it unsorted. So there's one more thing that we have to do here. And that is we need to actually call the sort on the model. So if we go to sort proxy model and call the sort function and we pass in the first column here, it'll actually sort the information for us. And the, normally what we do is we'd have a button or something and you'd click the button and it would sort stuff. I'll leave that as an implementation up to the, the viewer. This is just a quick and easy way to demonstrate this functionality. So with that sort function in, if we rerun this code, what we can see now is we have all our data sorted in terms of luminosity from darkest to lightest. Cool. So let's get to the second way to do a sort where we sort the data programmatically. Now, please note that this means that we're going to be changing our original model. 
where with the sort proxy model, we didn't actually have to do that. With the second way of programmatically sorting it, we will. So we'll go ahead and change this back to our model so that we can kind of demonstrate the effects of that. Now, if you look at the model, we're using a Q standard item model. And the easiest way to do this is to go ahead and implement our own custom item type based on Q standard item and re-implement the less than operator. I'm gonna go ahead and paste the framework for this in and we'll call our custom item type the photo item. Again, this code is gonna be very similar to what we've done before. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and get our data out in the terms of a Q variant. So we'll create a Q variant and we'll call this the left data. And we're just gonna be able to call the data method directly. And we're gonna go ahead and pass in our decoration role as the role that we want. And we'll do the same thing for our right data. And this time we're gonna call this on the other, which is described in our actual method declaration and do the same thing. Perfect. Once we've got that, we need to grab the Q icon out. So we'll call this the left icon. And we're going to use the same thing. We'll use the value function and pass in the type that we want. Perfect. And do the same thing for the right, using the right data. And then we've got our helper function, the luminosity less than, which we'll pass in our left icon and our right icon. Now with this one, we'll actually need to change the constructor a little bit and include a semicolon here. So with this one, we'll actually need to change the constructor a little bit. So instead of calling or creating a Q standard item right here, instead we're gonna wanna change this for our photo item. And again, for the second item as well, both the types and the instances. The last thing that we need to do is if we switch back to our main window, we need to make sure that we've actually enabled sorting. So if we go here, I've actually commented it out. It's in the setup table view UI. There's a method that says set sorting enable. So we wanna make sure that that is set to true. Now, if we run this, we can see that by clicking the columns, we can actually change how our data is sorted. And you can see the effect this has on the second column. Now, what I want you to also notice is that this changes our other view that we have, right? So our other view is now sorted by luminosity as well. And we can use the second column to kind of see what it looks like without the luminosity sorted. So as we make changes here in our table view, we're actually making changes in our secondary view, which is the downside of programmatically sorting our model instead of using a Q proxy model. So with that, we've successfully learned how to programmatically sort. We've learned how to use a proxy model. We've touched on Qt's model view paradigm and why it's important, as well as establishing a real use case for some advanced sorting.